This video is brought to you by Robinhood, the free and easy to use investment and trading brokerage. Robinhood allows you to trade and buy stocks, ETFs, bonds, and cryptocurrencies completely free. Also, if you download using the link in the description below, you'll get one free stock valued up to $200 just for signing up. No, you don't have to deposit a dime and you can become instantly a part owner in companies like Microsoft, Walmart, McDonald's, or Disney just by getting lucky. So download Robinhood today and start to taking advantage of this historic 2020 stock market crash no that's not my full portfolio you guys aren't ready for that just yet what's up youtube capital g here got some excellent duels featuring the sweetest deck in the meta and that of course would be madoche it still amazes me how much people don't believe in this deck even after the amazing support that it received coming out of eternity code look for my money if you've got a card that can potentially be a plus 11 there she is the cutest combo enabler in the game madoche petting sister if you got a card that can be a plus 11 and an otk that gets four cards off of your opponent's field just for one summon that doesn't even up, eat up your normal summon i don't know how you can't take that deck seriously but people still don't really believe in madoche now this build is uh it's got a little bit of spice anytime you see madoche knights you know it's pretty spicy i guess you got the three tactical talents as a prime go second option and uh madoche do have the ability of course, to go first or to go second, and that's why I think the deck is very versatile. Plus, basically, all the monsters at this point get you to Petting Sessor. Anyways, let's go ahead and roll this, but before we do, if you guys like dual videos like this, give the video a thumbs up and smash that thumbs up button so that YouTube actually shows this to other people who aren't you. Anyways, I believe Madoche are up first, and it looks pretty good as long as you can get the Petting Sessor. Doing that, by the way, of Angeli, you know you're going to be at least in a pretty competent position. Now, Minoche doesn't get all the negations. It's nowhere near the power of something like Ad Emancipator. However, it's still strong enough to make a board that is fairly resistant uh, to like a lot of the combo or the board breakers. I really like the fact that Madoche with Promenade, it has ways of playing around Dark Ruler no more. Ad Emancipator really just don't, or at least they don't play those cards. And a lot of your monsters are just big beat sticks. You get protection for like your spells and traps. You do get some disruption. And these monsters have very high defense. I mean, it's not exactly easy to take down two 3,000 booty teachers in the same turn, especially when you got protection. And if you got stuff like ticket and chateau you know they end up like floating anyways but let's see what the um the flame noble knight deck can do now he does open up with a very powerful normal summon i still think neo space connector is like top five most powerful normal summons in Yu-Gi-Oh because it's a one card i sold and take a card out of your opponent's hand although he actually drew the aqua dolphin so maybe i mean maybe he's running two i'm not exactly sure gonna get himself another promenade and this is going to be interesting he summons petting Sessor from his deck and that's gonna get ash blossom now the reason that this is important is because he is playing madoche knights now madoche knights needs uh petting or it needs pudding sets on the field so basically if you can't like if you don't have a pudding sets on field you can't resolve this card and this card is nuts it's a monster negation and it takes a card out of your opponent's hand actually maybe it's just uh let's see no 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 actually you can you just can't have any monsters in the graveyard i think you get the bonus effect if you uh if you have putting sets on the field but uh, it doesn't matter because it got popped anyways now it looks like his opponent is looking to combo off you guys know the link cross and the hall of fibrax plays and all that good stuff come out be banned these cards but uh yeah these cards obviously allow you to do some pretty crazy things usually boral savage uh boral load savage dragon will follow or a lot of synchro summoning will generally follow now this is where it's gonna get kind of cheesy and keep in mind this is still <laughs> this is still technically a warrior deck but we already got black garden on the field and we got crystal and synchro dragon of course there will be other monsters <laughs> dropped we're forcing tokens on our opponent's side of the field we're actually gonna resummon our iso crystal wing is coming back or excuse me yeah, yeah crystal wing is coming back he is going to get red eyes dragoon and then he did summon the uh the big emperor charles on the field which he has disruption as well and this board is looking pretty damn spicy if i don't say so myself you got fusions you have some uh link you got a link monster you got obviously some synchros he did go ahead and he did pop the field spell i believe that uh Sistart was destroyed as well otherwise the field spell would not have been destroyed so bye bye chateau bye bye uh well you know what at this point just bye bye to your entire field and it looks pretty good now this is interesting 
because usually these decks keep the Verde Anaconda on the field because, you know, they can't really get it off field. He's actually going to destroy his own Verde Anaconda. Verde Anaconda can be an Achilles heel because you got this little teeny 500 attack monster and sometimes your opponent will just run it over and they might end up killing you through it. So he's like, Cap, I don't need it. I already got my big, you know, bodies on field. What do I need this little Verde Anaconda on field for? It's just, honestly, it's going to be a hindrance. Now, he is playing the Smoke Grenade uh, Thief, but he already used his pop, so he can't actually trigger it. So that's unfortunate. Anyways, let's see what he's going to do. He's going to attempt to use his uh, his Charles effect, which means that he is looking to destroy something on field. And his opponent is going to respond with Promenade targeting the uh, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. I think he might just use, yeah, he's going to use the Red Eyes Dragoon uh, negation. So basically, it's, some of that negation is gone. Now, Hoot Cake is going to be popped. And you think, ah, oh, Cap, man, he's gone. But this is the power, guys, of the three tactical talents. Monster effects have been used. This means you can just, just give me that damn Red Eyes. My Red Eyes now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna try to pop that uh that crystal wing synchro dragon doesn't even matter that you're trying to negate me because I can't be destroyed by card effects, so <laughs> I'm going to destroy you whether you like it or not. And at this point, he can just summon Petting Cessor. He clears out his graveyard, and when Madoche resolve Petting Cessor and you don't have anything to stop it, you can kiss your bum goodbye because you know it's only a matter of time. Yeah, he's, he's going to scoop. You know it's only a matter of time before they're going to summon Tiaramisu. As I said before, like, this card is just, it's a win button. You summon uh, Petting Cessor. If she resolves, you're going to get pluses out the wazoo. And it doesn't matter that your opponent has all of these cards on the field. Your Emperor Charles can have so many layers of protection, but there is no protection against non-targeting removal. There's no protection, basically, against Tierra Masu, unless you have something like, I don't know, a Towers or, you know, a Masterpiece type card. Something that is just completely unaffected. I mean, even things like Mega Clops can get wrecked by Tierra Masu. Anyway, second duel is against the Mermill deck and uh surprisingly this is actually uh you know you wouldn't look you you wouldn't expect it by the opening hand but shockingly this is actually a Madoche deck these are two different builds and this build of Madoche is strictly going second not running all the funny jazz like Madoche Knights and some of the other cards I I I kind of think that the Madoche uh, pure go second builds are still completely viable you see the Nibiru right there um I would still personally run a promenade the reason that I would would run a promenade is because it's only a one copy it is searchable and if somebody says oh all you're doing is playing a bunch of go second card i mean look at this opening hand i mean seriously it's nothing but go second cards no actual combo pieces for you to combo off but if you do happen to you know get forced to go first you do get interruption against your opponent i'm not sure dark ruler no more was like really needed there but like whatever <laughs> he's gonna send dragoons to the graveyard and get that search he does have the you know he has another nibiru and he has another or he has an effect veiler so i think he can actually stop this even if, even if his opponent looks like he's going to combo off. Hella Firebrax, not into Link Cross this time, which is interesting. He's going to go for the Bahamut Shark. Now, this is the pretty much moment of truth because if you let Bahamut Shark resolve, you got to deal with Totally Awesome as well. Nobody wants to deal with that. So he is going to go for the Nibiru. 200 IQ play. I don't think I've ever seen Nibiru, to act, or Nibiru actually get stopped by Call by the Grave, but he has it in the graveyard from the previous turn. Wow. Turns out, guys, Nibiru actually can be called by the Grave. Who? Who knew? <laughs> Who actually knew? Well, it has to be this specific circumstance. Anyways, Effect Veiler is going to hit the Bahamut Shark. That means at least he won't have to deal with the Totally Awesome, but he's also going to have to deal with a Pot of Avarice. I will never stop talking about how big of a deal that card at three is, and he is going to lose a couple of cards in his hand, including that Nibiru, because Moonland Glacier is a B. Hey, at least he still has Dark Ruler no more, so you know maybe he can pop off in that next turn. Keep in mind, Madoche, like if he top decks... Let's see what his graveyard is. Uh, well, he has monsters. I was going to say, if he top decks a Pudding Cessor, I mean, he might be in there, or Petting Cessor, but not going to work now. He pretty much needs Hoot Cake and Hoot Cake only to pull her from the deck, and that's exactly what he's going to get. Now, his opponent's going to tag out the Halifibrax for the Desert Locust. Uh, this will not trigger its effect because it's still going to be negated by Dark Ruler no more. I don't know if he knew that or not. Anyways, we got Petting Cessor, and as I've been saying, you get Petting Cessor, and you win the Duel GG no re pretty much at that point well 
I mean, you gotta go, obviously, you gotta do some steps. You gotta get some searches for Chateau and for Ticket and all that good stuff. You're gonna go for some XC plays and Tiramisu, but you know, once the steps are done, basically, you're going to win. Goes for Tiramisu, looking to target a couple of his opponent. Well, not target, but spin a couple of uh, cards off his opponent's side of the field. And then when you have Chateau, these Madoche monsters are huge. You can just beat the crap out of your opponent. His opponent has one top deck, and man, what are you, what are you doing still playing up this spirit? This isn't, this isn't freaking, what's that the Mermil come out of? <laughs> Abyss Rising. <laughs> this isn't back in the Zexel era when this card was like super good. I used to actually, it's crazy. I used to, back during Zexel, I used to actually say that Abyss Spirit was broken. I, I want to say it got limited to one in the OCG at one point. I, I really think, yeah, I'm almost certain if I looked that up. That at one point, Abyss Spear actually got limited because people would pull Linde out of the deck and it was like impossible to kill it. If you ran it over, she floated. If you didn't run it over, she just, you know, she died in the end phase and floated regardless. That, that play was super dope. Anyways, let's check out this Madoche build. Not the uh, wonky go first build, the one that was playing like Madoche Knights, but the go second build. So you guys can see... Madoche uh, basically having all of its monsters, like uh, all the monsters except like these two, Messengelato and Pudding Cess, directly lead you straight to Petting Cesser, i.e. the win condition. And then it's kind of like Zodiac. The, the rest of your entire deck can just be like either blind go second power cards or just hand traps. You can run Nibiru in the main deck. You can run Ash Blossom, Effect Veiler, Dark Ruler No More, Super Polymerization, uh, Impermanence, Evenly Match. I do really like decks like this because when you play against... Um, decks that make these super strong boards like ad emancipators yeah they might be able to like play through a hand trap or two they might not have a problem playing through an ash or a veiler or nibiru because they do have effect negation even uh as they go through their combo but they're gonna get wrecked by dark ruler no more because they're not playing any solemns or any things that are any non-monster negation uh type cards that can basically deal with this there's no deck in Yu-Gi-Oh that's like super high combo related that can deal with super poly because it is a spell speed four and permanence is also another card that like you can't use called by the grave on so there's really nothing to stop that and then again you have these like giant blowout cards like evenly match again i i personally would run promenade in this build that would just be my suggestion maybe for the 40 uh the 41st card just being like another option in case you're for you're forced to go first because if this build is forced to go first it doesn't quite have that like, it doesn't quite have that solid play. And Madoche, if you do go first and you have Promenade, you're perfectly fine. You have Disruption. Your opponent can't really evenly you unless they, I guess, bait out the Promenade. But I still think Madoche is like a legit contender. 100%. It's a top five deck, in my opinion. One card OTK, one card plus 11. You're never going to say that that, or you're never going to convince me that that's a bad deck. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this, give the video a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.